remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Evil genius Travis Cook back with you once again. And before we get started this week, I have the need to, to give you a, a pretty important announcement regarding this show. Uh, something we're very thrilled about, actually. Uh, we've been on on this YouTube show now for about two and a half years. We've had a great deal of fun doing this show and putting it together for you. And we've gotten a little bit of a following on this show. A lot of a, a good discussion and interaction has come from it. And a lot of people really have enjoyed the show. Well, it's come to a point now where we've been uh, allowed the opportunity or been approached with the opportunity, I should say, to take this show to an entirely uh, different level and a bigger level. Uh, we have recently been approached by Truth Frequency Radio, truthfrequencyradio.com. They're kind of a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week internet radio station, and we have been offered an opportunity to bring this show over to their platform two hours every single week. And so that is something we're going to be doing starting January 4th. We're going on the radio nationally, internationally, at truthfrequencyradio.com. You can also find them on 90.7 FM in Denver. So we're going to a major market radio station on top of it all uh, in terms of everything. So it's thrilling. It's going to be a two-hour show every week on Sunday a morning or afternoon, depending on what part of the country you're in. Uh, on the East Coast, it's going to be 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Central, it's noon to 2 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time Zone, 11 a.m. to uh, 1 p.m. And if you're out on the left coast, 10 a.m. to noon. Every single Sunday, two hours a week. So we're going to have the, the time to take to delve into all the, all the topics we want to at length. Uh, we usually only do these shows here for about 15 minutes. So we're going to have a lot more latitude that way. And uh, our thanks to Chris Gio and uh, Joe Joseph and all the guys. There's some great hosts over there that do some wonderful things. And we're proud to be part of that fold. And, hey, uh, just so you know, you've heard me say on this show many times that the most important thing about it is that I always wanted to do a show in which uh, I don't have to answer to anybody and, uh, you know, that we have the freedom to do what we want. And that's why we've kind of stayed away from some of the other platforms. Uh, rest assured that I have been assured by Chris and Joe and everybody over at Truth Frequency Radio that uh, there will be no restraints on what I do. Uh, that we can talk about any topic we want, take any position we want, and we will not get thrown off the air or, or, or uh, you know, chastised or anything like that. The only rule is I can't cuss over there. But you guys who watch this show know that I don't do that much over here anyway, so I think we can live with that. Uh, we're really excited about it. January 4th. That starts on Truth Frequency Radio, 90.7 FM in Denver. Be watching for that and be with us on our maiden voyage. So with that uh, proud piece of housekeeping out of the way, on to this week's topic. Uh, you know, it is Christmas time. It is the holiday season. We're all going through a lot of hustle and bustle. I'm no different. And it's possible sometimes that in the middle of December, November, December, that holiday area that and a really important news event can happen. Something very critical can happen, and we might miss it. We might not be paying as much attention to the news and world events as you ordinarily do. So maybe something will happen and go by the wayside. And and those of us who would ordinarily pay attention to such things, maybe it just maybe we just miss it. Maybe it goes overhead. Maybe we're turning the other way. We don't see it. Whatever. So I'm going to ask your help with something here because I, I'm I'm wondering. I'm getting the feeling that maybe something happened behind my back that I wasn't aware of and things have changed and I don't know about it so I need you to help me a little bit here I gotta ask you a question did something happen over the last oh two three months where Cuba you know our neighbors out there to the south did something happen where Cuba suddenly rejected communism and 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 atoned for their sins and apologized to us and became a good little neighboring country again did that happen because I haven't heard of that happening. I, I haven't heard of the Castros being deposed from power. I haven't heard of, of communism biting the dust in Cuba. I haven't heard of Cuba having their Berlin Wall coming down moments. So I must have missed that. I must have missed the news story where Cuba suddenly became good and righteous. But I did hear last week that Barack Obama decided or said that we should kind of 
thaw out our relations with Cuba a little bit, and and we should revisit our embargoes and uh, all of the 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 uh, little relationship or lack thereof that we have with Cuba. Now, I would think that an American president would only say such a thing if Cuba had turned from their wicked ways. If Cuba had rejected communism, if the Castro's were out of power, if Cuba came to us with hat in hand and said, we're sorry, we didn't mean that whole Cuban Missile Crisis thing. We're sorry we've opposed you at every turn for 50 years. Mea culpa, can we please come back into the fold? I'm assuming that must have happened if Obama said that, right? Huh, maybe not. Maybe Obama just decided to let bygones be bygones and ignore, oh, I don't know, the last 50 freaking years of world history. Who knows? I'm being a little facetious. I know that Cuba did not suddenly have their assault on the road to Damascus moment. But I see what happened and, and the way our president is attempting to thaw out relations with this evil communist country who's been an enemy of ours for the better part of half a century... Now look at that, and I look at some other things that have happened over the last few weeks in America, and I'm starting to scratch my, my head, and I'm starting to look at my own country, and I'm starting to think, man, WTF, what the frick is happening? I mean, I look at an American president softening his tone on Cuba, and I look back the week before that, and, you know, Democratic Senator put out this uh, report on the CIA and torture and all these horrible things we did to torture, you know, our enemies in this war. And, and the president was very concerned about that and almost apologetic for what we did. And all sorts of people in the media were, were critical of our actions. Not the American people. The American people, by the way, were not critical of our use of torture if indeed we did it. There was a Pew Research poll last week that indicated that only 29% of Americans had a problem with it, so the American people were good with it. But hey, Barack Obama and a lot of people in the media and Barbara Boxer and so many others were just, oh, they were just so torn up about our torture. They all, almost took America to task for what we did, even though 70 plus percent of the American people were entirely in favor of it. And I look at that. I look at Obama's statements on Cuba. I look over the last two or three months at people protesting in favor of a young man who attacked a police officer and tried to kill him and criticized the police officer for defending himself. I look at people more recently in New York in this Eric Garner case, which I will freely admit is not nearly as cut and dried as the Michael Brown case, but in any, in any event, I see people instantly protesting that the police officers in that case were, were not... Uh, indicted by a grand jury and, and people that were not going to give <clears throat> the police officers a benefit of the doubt when dealing with a criminal such as Eric Garner. And that's not to say that I agree with the law that he was convicted on or that he was violating, but he was breaking the law and he was a known criminal. And yet people are upset that in the heat of the moment of trying to apprehend him, that may have had an effect later on down the road because of his own physical condition that he ended up dying. And people want to hold the, the police responsible for that. People want to give the criminal the benefit of the doubt, much like they did with Michael Brown. And I even look back just a few days ago at Sony, who'd uh, been the victim of some hacking, most likely from North, North Korea, over a movie in which uh, Kim Jong-un, or someone like him, was supposed to be assassinated at the end of it. And Sony backs down and says, okay, okay, we won't release the movie. I'm looking at all these things, and I'm wondering what country we're in. Because this sure as hell doesn't seem like America to me. You see, America used to know, and it wasn't that long ago, that America used to know right from wrong. America used to be able to identify evil at the drop of a hat, and more importantly... America used to aggressively root out evil, fight it, and eliminate it. In the old days, America didn't used to back down or shirk when those who were in the wrong made demands of those of us who are civilized. Our grandparents and great-grandparents would never have put up with a bunch of people coming out and protesting in favor of a punk thug who tried to kill a policeman. 
our grandparents and great grandparents would have taken one look at Cuba and said, go yourselves. Our grandparents and great grandparents would have looked at North Korea and said, hey, you got a problem with us making a movie about assassinating your president. We'll just call the CIA and have the real deal done and then we'll see how you feel. We used to have the gumption and the, dare I say it, because I'll never be able to use this word on Truth Frequency Radio, we used to have the balls to pull people's cards when they tried to do stuff like that. But something about this generation seems to have gone off the rails in that regard. Something about this generation of Americans, at least a certain percentage of them, seems to be unwilling to identify evil or unable to identify evil or, or even worse yet, even if they can't identify it, they're too scared of it to fight it. They'll back down. They'll let evil have their way. I mean, it's easy to blame Barack Obama. But remember, a lot of people voted for Barack Obama. That is the problem. Not Obama himself. A guy like Obama never could have been elected years ago. I mean, it's often been said he's the first ever anti-war president to be elected. And that's true. That never could have happened at a previous point in American history. And as I look at this generation, as I look at a significant number of people who would have voted for Barack Obama. As I look at a significant number of people, not a majority, but a significant number of people who see a police officer defending his life against a thug who's trying to kill him, and they take the, th the side of the thug. When I look at people who are upset that someone apprehended a criminal, and the criminal, because of his own physical condition, died. And when I look at what happened just a day ago on a couple of days ago this weekend when a man cowardly ambushed and assassinated two New York City police officers and instantly you saw people on social media, Twitter, Facebook and the like praising the assassin who did it I look at that and wonder who we are I look at that and I think back to history and you guys who watch this show for the last couple of years you know that I have a tendency to put everything in a historical perspective. I look at cr critical key moments in America's history and I wonder to myself, what would have happened if this generation of Americans had been around in earlier times? What would have happened if this generation of Americans would have been around at the time of the American Revolution? Would they have fought? Or would they have said, no, 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 we're intimidated by, by Britain and, and the crown. Let's, let's just let bygones be bygones. What would have happened if this generation had been around during the war, the war of 1812 when we were attacked by the British? Would they have capitulated? What would have happened if this generation would have been around at the time of the westward expansion? When we took a good country and made it a great country? When we civilized the rest of this continent? When we took by manifest destiny this great land and made it a great nation? Could they have done that? Would they have done that? Would they have had the gumption to do that? Or would they have backed down? I look at this generation and wonder what they would have done in World War II. Would they have dropped those bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? I don't know. I hate to say this about my fellow Americans, but I'm coming to the opinion and perhaps the realization that a significant number of people in this country are completely confused in terms of right and wrong and are unwilling and unable to fight against evil in the rare event that they actually figure out what evil is. What is down is up and up is down these days. Because make no mistake, those anti-American thugs who are protesting in favor of Michael Brown, who are protesting against the police, who are protesting against the New York Police Department, or those who would say, ah, Cuba, they're not that bad, or those who would be upset that we did what was necessary, the CIA did what was necessary to protect us from Muslims trying to kill us, and then, oh, we tortured a little bit. People who are upset about that. Those people as wrong as they are, they think they have the moral high ground. That's the disturbing thing about this. 
It's not like they're trying to be evil themselves. They think they're good. That's how twisted this society has, has become. And I don't know, maybe it's the secularization that we've allowed in this country over the last half century that's done it and it's twisted people to the point that they don't know right from wrong anymore. But if America's going to survive, this is going to have to change. Those of us who know right from wrong, those of us who have not been corrupted by secularization, those of us who understand good and evil and are not afraid to fight it, we must seize the day. We must take the microphone, take the bully pulpit away from those who do not understand good and evil. We must take the visibility away from those who are a danger to America. And we must prevent them by any means from attaining power and attaining influence. It's time for the adults to take over in America again. People like you and I, people who know right from wrong, people who are Christians, people who are not secularists, people who understand good and evil and do not have a problem using any means to take out evil in this country and in this world. It's time for us to take our country back. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius, Travis Koch. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, January 4th, truthfrequencyradio.com. We'll see you there. I'm not sure if they know what they've gotten into, but we're glad to be there. We'll see you next time.